Hey everyone, and welcome to this tutorial where I'm going to show you how I put together this little guy. At the time of recording this, uh, the MPO 2023 was coming up, and I saw that they had the critter category that they added to the competition, and I really wanted to enter something into that. All the bits that you see are from the slime kit, uh, which is just an incredible kit. It's got so many awesome little bits, um, and it's got some really cool little critters in it, actually. And I came across this little lizard and fell in love with it and just, uh, you know, wanted to create an entry with that. So I've actually got two of these slime kits, so, uh, you know, it was easy enough to kind of use some parts. There's two alternative builds for the slimes, so you can kind of use some bits that you, you wouldn't actually need for the other build. Um, so it was quite handy. And, uh, you know, I managed to scrape together quite a few little bits um, that were going to create a nice little scene. So when I'm starting a project like this, I usually find it helpful to plan a little bit um, and create a bit of a visual of the composition. Um, you don't necessarily have to stick to it. Um, just a little sketch, just to kind of get your idea onto paper and just to kind of have something to refer back to while you're putting things together. Um, I find it's better just to have a bit of a plan um, rather than just kind of go in blind. So after I decided what bits I was going to use, I started clipping them out um, using a nice pair of sharp cutters. Uh, so these are some of the bits that I was looking at to help form the composition. Um, obviously I'm going for a little jungle sort of scene there. So nice little leaves, um, little plants and things, um, and some of these bits that formed little roots and stuff, um, you know, creating a bit of uh, atmosphere and environment for the little lizard to be set in. And of course, very important, get yourself a fresh blade on your hobby knife. You know, we're, we're putting together a competition entry and usually if I'm, you know, doing something like this, I like to just have a nice fresh blade uh, because cleaner cuts means less mess, uh, less cleaning up and you just end up with a nicer finish. So I know I'm going to keep raving on about this kit, but the cleanup was so minimal. Uh, you know, there's barely any mold lines, so it was really nice to put together. And I only needed to use one of these bowls, so it was easy enough just to trim it off and, and actually created a nice clean cut. The most cleaning up required was on this part, which was actually pretty minimal anyway, which I thought looked like a little Seraphon serving platter. I have your lunch, sire. I don't know, it's probably some sort of like tablet sort of thing, but I just thought it looked cool and I thought it would serve as a good sort of foundation for building up the base on. And of course the skink's hands were attached to it, so it was just a matter of kind of clipping them and cleaning them off, which was, you know, pretty easy anyway. And these three bunches here I thought would make cool roots sort of protruding from the ground, which would be a nice little basing detail. All right, so here we are with all the bits cleaned and ready. And now it's time to start dry fitting all the pieces together. Uh, so I use blue tack to build up the forms on the base and kind of sort of roughly put things together. Um, I knew from the plan stage there was going to be a fair bit of building up shapes and volumes to kind of make everything work. Uh, and the cool thing about the, the blue tack is it's not permanent. You can kind of move things around and get a feel for where you want all the parts to go. Um, and if something's not working, move it into a better position. Whee! <laughs> anyway, one thing I did change, which you can I probably don't notice there, but I put the bowl on the other side. Um, and this was to kind of keep any distracting kind of things out of the foreground and kind of open up the foreground a little bit more so that uh, the lizard would stand out a bit better. Uh, and then it's kind of just a matter of placing all the little bits around. As I said, this is a rough, uh, you know, kind of just cobbling together of parts to just kind of see how things work. But, you know, so now you've got an idea of how it's going to look. Uh, I hadn't prepped up the plinth actually at this stage, so I gave it a bit of a sand, starting with a rough sandpaper. Uh, I think this is 200 grit. Um, give it a good sand. And if you're, you know, wanting to sand a flat surface, obviously I'd recommend put the sandpaper onto a flat surface um, just to give it a nice smooth finish. Um, and it might look a bit rough and scratchy and you might feel like you're kind of ruining the plinth here. Uh, but bear in mind, we are going to go over this with a finer grit later on and kind of buff it out a bit. Uh, but, you know, once you've prepped it all up and you've painted it, you know, you're not even going to notice any of these scratches. So the finer grit is a 1200. Um, it just helps to kind of create fine scratches, which are going to make the surface a lot smoother. 
All right, now it's time to for real assemble. I'm using these Millipart Fimo Mix Rocks. Uh, I made these from a tutorial by Dave Perryman, AKA Infernal Brush. Um, I will put a link in the description below to the video that he put together for it. And it was actually based on an old uh, tutorial on a blog. I can't remember the name of the original artist, but check it out. Uh, and they're really cool and useful, have a great texture and just really nice for layering up because they're nice and thin. It kind of has a bit of a slate kind of texture to it. So now we're committing stuff to the plinth and we're gluing it on with super glue, getting everything sort of built up uh, and basically, you know, transferring what we planned out with the blue tack. Uh, and sort of building up some of those, some of those levels and volumes um, just using these rocks for the finished product. So I actually filled in the back of uh, the lizard's little perching stone with uh, a putty mix uh, of Millipart and green stuff. I wasn't really sure what to do um, with this. I was kind of just, you know, seeing what would work as I went. Uh, but I did level things out a little bit with this little bit of slate on top of the serving platter, AKA tablet. One of the nice things about this Millipot uh, Fimo kind of rock stuff is that it's quite easy to um, carve into it. It's quite carvable. So trying to make a spot at the moment for the bowl was quite pretty easy. Um, just using a, a sculpting tool to kind of scrape away at it. Um, and just trying to create a nice little snug spot where it would fit and kind of work with the surrounding rocks. With more of the Milliput slate, we're sort of building things up a bit more, um, filling in a lot of these gaps and just building out the texture a bit. So I just had to trim this root a little bit just to kind of make it fit a bit better where I wanted it to go. So I started getting some putty in there and what I'm doing now is just creating a bit of foundation for the plants rather than just trying to glue something with a small contact point onto uh, you know another solid object um, I thought it was better to kind of push it into the putty a little bit and the added advantage here is it kind of just allows us to move things around a bit before committing anything to super glue um, and then yeah just a touch of super glue on there just to give it a bit more hold. And there's still quite a few gaps underneath the serving platter. More lunch, sire. So we're kind of just blending things in a bit now and trying to sort of roughly replicate the texture around, uh, you know, those slate kind of rock textures. I did a little bit of smoothing out of the putty on the back of this stone here, which I still wasn't 100% sure what to do with. Uh, but you'll see later on that I did end up actually adding a skull to sort of obscure things a little bit and kind of make it not look so plain. All right, so we're starting to get the last of the plastic elements in place. Uh, with this little root here and then adding the other plants as well um, So again, we're creating a bit of foundation with the putty for those plants to stick into and have a bit of a better hold So I just wanted to actually quickly point out some of my thought process behind what I went with with the composition uh, so Clearly I wanted his face to be the focal point uh, where our eye is really being drawn when we first look at the model. Um, and then what we've got here is basically kind of a bit of a triangular solid structure there. Um, and then the leaves themselves are kind of leading our eye in towards the base. Um, and this a combination of this and sort of the way that I painted the, the leaves uh, in, in a kind of intentional way to assist in drawing the eye towards the base. 
and then it kind of just leads us back in and up towards the focal point. So you kind of get a little glimpse at the leaves um, and then that sort of draws your eye into the middle and back up. Um, and his tail is one of the things that kind of stands out a bit as well because it's, it's definitely more vibrant than in some of the surrounding kind of colors on the base. Um, uh, you know, that, that'll make more sense uh, once you see the painted version um, and I'll explain it a little bit more in the painting video as well. Uh, and then the other thing as well, is that in the foreground there's really no uh, elements here that are drawing our focus and that's you know an intentional thing as well because um, you know we, we don't want to draw any attention away from the focal point here and, and that was part of the reason why I decided to put the bowl on the other side because uh, it's kind of one of those visual elements that can draw the eye a little bit uh, but you know we want we want his face to stand out so the last of the building steps is sort of filling in a bit more and smoothing things out while still trying to keep things looking natural. Um, it's better to sort of have less of those kind of gaps that can become a little bit unsightly. Um, so it's just a matter of going back and forth with the putty and then also adding some extra little bits of slate just to kind of build up the visual texture a bit um, and kind of make things look a little bit more interesting. Um, and, you know, it's just adding that sort of final little detail to it. I gotta say I love working on these kinds of projects where I'm putting together little scenic bases and just working on creating so much atmosphere and character. Um, yeah, it's just a joy for me to work on things like that. So if you like this, please let me know in the comments below uh, whether you'd like to see more content like this. Uh, you know, I'm kind of buzzing with the idea of doing some dioramas or vignettes or just things that have a lot of atmosphere and just are really visually pleasing. So yeah, leave a comment below if uh, that's the kind of stuff that you'd like to see. With everything in place, I let that dry overnight just to let the putty cure and all of that uh, super glue set properly. Um, and then last thing to do is to add some sand. So thinned PVA, um, you know, thin down PVA with a little bit of water just to kind of help it flow into the gaps a bit better. Uh, and then it's just a matter of sprinkling on the sand. Um, I actually have a tub with a mix of different grains of coarseness, which I think just helps to give it a bit more realism. Um, and I actually would like to source an even finer grit. Uh, I think that it would look nicer for, I mean, especially for smaller scale kind of things like this. And once that's dry, just kind of flick away any of the sand that's ended up in weird spots that don't really make sense um, or anything that's kind of getting in the way of any detail or anything like that. Uh, and then give it a heavily thinned down PVA and water mix just to kind of seal off the groundwork a bit. Uh, you don't want those bits of sand kind of flicking off um, as you're trying to paint um, and causing any issues there. And the assembly is officially done. Good enough to serve up to your amphibian overlord. Please check back later on my channel for the painting side of this in part two of this series. Uh, please subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.